Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey peeps, today we're going to take a look at Android Mainframe from Fantasy Flight Games. This is yet another game in their Android uh, shared universe of games, just like they have a Runebound and Twilight Imperium universe. They also have Android, which of course started with the game of the same name, Android, which I would describe as an ambitious but very flawed massive board game in the true fantasy flight tradition uh then you had android netrunner which was a huge hit very widely acclaimed including by myself even though i don't play it anymore and then there was infiltration which is sort of the forgotten android game but a lot of people like it a lot i think it's just fine so android mainframe what this brings to the table is what none of those ones did before which is a real true abstract game actually in a go style where thematically you are um, each taking control of a runner from the netrunner game in fact the exact same runners and you are trying to section off parts of this mainframe for your own devices to try and stop the corporation whatever the case may be it's an abstract game so don't get too into it um and on top of that you're also using special powers you're trying to put down access points there's just a few twists uh, quite a few twists to the game that sets it uh, dramatically apart from go and other abstract games so let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played then we're going to come back i'll let you know what i think Android Mainframe is a competitive abstract game for two to four players. The goal of the game is to have the most points at the end. You'll gain these points by sectioning off parts of the mainframe and claiming them as your own. The end occurs when there are no more legal moves to be made or when the stack of program cards run out. Start off by assembling the board, which comes in four easy to connect plastic pieces. You'll have a supply of blue partition pieces next to it. Every player chooses a runner to play as. You'll take their stack of 8 access point tokens and their 5 unique runner program cards. Then you'll shuffle those cards and only keep 3 at random for the game. Keep these as a hand of cards hidden from your opponents. Starting with the first player and going around, each player places an access point token face up on the board. Finally, you'll shuffle the generic program cards and make a face up lineup of 4 cards next to the stack. On your turn, you have 3 options for what to do. First, you can execute one of the generic programs in the lineup. Simply take one of the cards, perform the action it dictates, discard it, and replace the empty space in the lineup with another card from the deck. Most generic program cards will let you put partitions out onto the board in a specific shape or pattern along empty pathways next to nodes, which are the raised squares. For instance, skew lets you put out three partitions in the shape of a seven, while its mirror opposite veer lets you put out a backward seven wherever they fit. Replicate, on the other hand, lets you put out two partitions in any empty space that you like. Other cards will let you move existing partitions or access points, or even swap the positions of two access points. The whole point of placing these partitions is to make zones. Zones are areas of one or more nodes that are surrounded by partitions. This can only happen if at least one access point token is inside the potential zone when it's closed off. Otherwise, you can't place that last partition to close it off. Once a zone is created, a few things occur. First, partitions of a zone cannot ever be moved by programs. Second, if only one player has one or more access points in the zone, those tokens are immediately flipped face down and the zone becomes secured. A secured zone cannot be affected in any way by programs. Access point and partitions can't be placed inside, and partitions can't be moved. At the end of the game, the player who locked it down can now score it. Third, if there happens to be access points from more than one player in the same zone, it's considered unsecured. No one locks it down and flips over their tokens, and access points and partitions can continue to be placed inside, potentially making smaller zones. As soon as one player is the sole owner of access points in a zone, it's immediately locked down and secured. Instead of using a generic program, you could on your turn simply discard the top card of the generic program deck and place one of your access points on the board in an allowable area. Remember that you have 8 of these total. Alternatively, you can execute one of your unique runner programs and then discard it. These have wildly more dramatic effects than the generic cards, like giving you an extra turn, allowing you to place extra access points or partitions, killing off multiple access points, scrying the program deck, or even mimicking someone else's unique program card. 
As stated before, when the deck runs out or when no program can be legally executed out on the board, the game ends and you score points for your face down access point tokens. Each face down token is worth points equal to the number of spaces in its secured zone. If you have more than one face down token in the same zone, they each score those points. Face up tokens are worth nothing. Whoever has the most points is the winner. In a sense, I really have to hand it to Android Mainframe because it takes two broad genres of games, abstract games and take that card games, and mashes them together into a game that I really, really do not like at all. So it actually ends up being worse than those constituent parts. And I think that the problem here, for me at least, is that I, I like some abstract games, okay? Some of them are just fine. Or just whatever. I, I don't mind them. I don't hate them. They're just what, what they are. Not usually my cup of tea. I would put Go into that category. So the core game here, where you are these runners trying to cordon off parts of the mainframe, uh, that's not really thematic, of course, is that core game is okay. You're partitioning off different sections, trying to put the, action, the access points in, flip things over. That's fine, okay? I don't I wouldn't love it, but it'd be okay. But you tack on to that this whole card aspect. First with the generic programs, which in and of itself is frustrating because it's like, wait a minute, why do I have to take cards to do what I want to do? If this was like go, I would just like put down a stone and then I'd work my way up and try to sanction off territory. Why would that be so bad in this game rather than make these Dramatic, like, haha, now I get to put down the block section that looks like, you know, or, or the section that looks like a seven, or the backward seven, and now I can do these things. Like, I don't know, that feels like a really weird tacked on thing. But mixed in with those generic cards are the access point swap cards, which <laughs> it seems like, okay, well, it's a big deal, right? Well, it's a very big deal. That, in just getting one of those cards at the right time, at a certain stage in the game, could give you the game, or at least screw over someone else completely. And you might say, well, Nick, that's just a sour grapes thing. Like, did that happen to you? Sure it did. Then I played another game, and I did it to somebody else. And I didn't take any joy in it, because it came up at the right time for me to do it. It was I had a plan. I had a strategy. So did the pr people that did it to me. But it wasn't like, uh, okay, here's my plan and my strategy. I'm just going to follow it through to the end, like a real abstract game like you would do. Um, and the only thing you'd have to worry about is what your opponent is planning on doing, too, and trying to anticipate that. This is just, oh, <laughs> that card came out at the perfect time, my time, on my turn. Well, I'll take it and screw them over. And then planes don't even matter at that point. That's why I said it's like a take that game thrown on top of it. And that's not even mentioning, by the way, the unique player powers, which on the surface of it, great. I love unique player powers. I love feeling different than the other players in any game. Love that mechanism. But in this case, the effects of your special powers, in some cases, are so over the top and dramatic that, again, what's the point of having an abstract game where it's supposed to be, you know, dedicated, thoughtful strategy when it's just like, boom, everything you just worked for, gone. And randomly, by the way, because you have three of the five. So some of the big bomb cards, because of course, <laughs> which is another problem, some cards are way more powerful than others take a whole other turn, which doesn't sound like that bad a thing. Like, it, well, that's comparable to putting out two access points, right? Well, no, because you might, again, be able to get another card out into the row, which could be incredibly powerful for you. Uh, so just some cards are way more uh, powerful than others. And one of the cards is destroy an access point of each player. Which is like, oh, well, I got to destroy mine too. That can't be that good. That card can be devastating at the right time. It can flip over entire sections to someone else, uh, contested, unsecured zones. It's just the swings in this game. For some, a game that's supposed to be very thoughtful and strategic, it's so weird. And I couldn't really get into it. It's not that I couldn't wrap my head around it. Well, I will say this for the game. It's very simple. It's very easy to get up and running. It's a concept you'll learn very easily. But at the same time, it's just so dull. Even with these take that elements and the wild swings, it's just like I'm going through the motions waiting for one of those dumb things to happen. So you have a dull game mixed with randomness, which I do not equate to fun and excitement. And it just ends up being a game that I was not into at all. 
I don't mind the core concept of putting out the partitions. I think that's okay. Um, I like the artwork. I like the components, even though it's reused artwork. Uh, I wish that they had used the Android theme on something better. I mean, again, there's so many game concepts out there, so many things they could have done with it. They could have redone another edition of the original Android and made it better. Made it a really good game this time, because there was potential there. But they spent their effort on this. They found an abstract game that they liked and tacked on this theme. So, pretty disappointed in that, and disappointed with this game as a whole. And I typically like any kind of Android game and Fantasy Flight games in general. Not this one. That is Android Mainframe from Fantasy Flight Games. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.